Guys, we are back with the screen team, and we have got uh, Tracy's uh, special picks uh, for this week that we've been reviewing, and we are ready to review uh, probably one of the biggest movies of the fall so far. We've got Tracy in the studio. We've got Guy in the studio as well, and we're getting ready to review the new adaptation of the movie It. And I say, let's just get rid of the BS, and let's get right to it. Tracy, we'll start with you. It's what were your initial thoughts with this movie? I really liked it. I I liked how they broke it up. I don't want to give too many spoilers. I don't think this is a big deal, but we can go th- ahead and do spoilers. I do spoilers every time when I'm talking. <laughs> so I spoilers for book and movie. Let's just go ahead and call it. There you go. Well, right. I like how they broke it up. Part one is just the kids part of it, so you get really okay. invested in the kids. Right, right. And then the next, I guess, movie is going to be when they come back. Yes, chapter two is going to be the adults. And I think the casting was great. Those kids were wonderful. Mm-hmm. I did not like the portrayal. The actress was great. The Beverly Marsh. I liked her being shy and sweet, which me and Guy had kind of talked about that at the theater, that maybe they were alluding in their own way to a scene in the book that didn't make it to the first movie. Mm-hmm. Lots of scenes. Lots of scenes. <laughs> <laughs> but I liked I, I liked the actress. I liked the movies. It was... It was good. I didn't like the clown as much as Tim Curry. And and why didn't you like the clown as much? I thought Tim Curry was actually scary. Mm-hmm. This guy, I love Tim Curry. I, I do too, but he wasn't scary. He was freaking hilarious. I even found as a, him scary. Even, even as an 11-year-old, I couldn't stop laughing. See, that's how I felt about this guy. He just vibrated really fast. That was his big scary thing he did. He was creepy. He wasn't supposed to be scary. He was supposed to be creepy. All the time. Book, film, it's supposed to be the human interaction. The human manifestations of it. And the natural evil of dairy that's supposed to cause the fear in the children. That's it. It just has a manifestation of the clown to be the one to attack. But all the stuff that leads up to it is never the clown that makes them scared. It's everything else that they're afraid of making them scared. The 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 clown is supposed to be creepy, period. He's supposed to creep you out and unnerve you so that when he attacks, it just is that little last nail in the coffin. But he's not supposed to be the initial fear, ever. Which I get that. They all had their own thing georgie and you know they they had their own thing and what was there was one that was different there was a werewolf in the first movie and he wasn't the same fear in this movie i thought there was a few differences with those with those kind of fears wasn't there well yeah but that was also because of the update of the time Mm -hmm. in the 1950s you could have richie scared of i was a teenage werewolf right whereas it's not what made him scared in uh the 80s uh what made richie scared in the 80s was he was a complete smart aleck he was a wise ass the whole time what what made him scared was the fact that everything everybody had been telling him that he'd been brushing off is proven to be right that's where his fear was that everything he knew about reality was turned on its head and that's where his fear was. And I, I appreciated it. So, Guy, are you with Tracy? Did you enjoy the movie yet? I actually really did enjoy it. Um, <coughs> I'm thankful they left out quite a few of the more... Controversial scenes from the book? I wouldn't even say controversial. I'd say pure disturbing scenes. Okay. Apparently, Stephen King was going through some stuff. Yeah, no kidding. Um... <laughs> They left out uh, some of the interactions between uh, Bev and her dad, which they danced around without really going into, which is the way you need to do it. Mm -hmm. They left out the one scene that everybody seems to want to talk about is uh, after they defeat the clown in the book and they're out there, they've gone through this traumatic experience and they want to know how they're going to remain as close as they are when they've had such trauma that can divide them. Beverly says that love is what kept them together, at which point she decides to 
love welcome to all love the all boys into manhood. <laughs> right, right, right. Is about the most delicate way that I can put that. So let me let me ask you guys something. This movie is breaking records box office wise. I mean, it's making tons and tons and tons of money. Highest grossing horror film of all time. Do you think this movie is overhyped? Me personally, yes. I thought it was good. Do I think it was a masterpiece? No. Do I think it's worthy of every single bit of what the critics are bending over for? No. But was it good? Yes. Tracy, what do you think? See, I don't I don't think it was overhyped just because I, I mean I know what you're saying with everybody's talking about it. But right now there's nothing else to talk about that's anywhere in that level. Oh no, I, I agree. There hasn't been a horror movie with this kind of buzz in a good fifteen years. I agree with that. But do I think that, you know, it's worthy of you know, this is a masterpiece. And I've even heard one reviewer say that it was on par with Psycho in terms of a masterpiece of horror. No. <laughs> no. Yeah. I don't think any remake where you know the ending is going to be considered a masterpiece. I don't even look at it as a remake. I I view it as trying to stand alone on its own. I completely went in there taking the miniseries out of the equation. No, e- no even thought about the miniseries. I didn't draw no parallels nor comparisons when I was watching it. I wanted to let it stand on its own, which, as Chris has heard me stout many a time on here, that is my hallmark for anything, remake or otherwise. It must stand alone. And it does. But ultimately, there was a little too much reliance on jump scares. Which seems to be the thing to do right now. Well, and it's I blame the common the YouTubers. thing. <laughs> it's not just the YouTubers. Jump scares are the basest form form of horror. It is when you have nothing else to do for atmosphere. You make it quiet and have something jump out at you because you have no ideas. This told a really engaging story. Now, the things for me that really unnerved me were uh, the sequences where um, Henry Bowers was carving his name into oh, Ben's yeah. stomach. Yeah. yeah. That was unnerving for me. Yeah. Bev's father being a little too creepy in his wanting to have Bev be his girl. Right. Was unnerving to me. Like I said, the human interaction was the scares for me and the creep factor that really added to the atmosphere. But moreover than that, it told an engaging story where you felt like you knew these kids, you wanted to cheer for these losers, and yes, it's the stereotypical and standard common common, uh, storyline of, we have a misunderstanding. I don't like you no more. Her rumph, but we're going to come back together at the end to triumph. Right. It's been done to freaking death. But it's still even though it's been done to death and you knew they were going to come back together, you still were on the ride with the characters. You felt their journey. You emoted with them and that is good storytelling. Tracy, this movie's been out for a few weeks. For those who haven't seen it, maybe they're on the fence. Maybe they're like, ah, maybe I should wait. Should I go to the theater? What would you recommend to them? Can they should they see it in the theater? Oh, definitely. I it was worth it for me. Mm-hmm. I was actually down budgeting my last few dollars, and I put it out there because that was worth it for me. Guy, what do you think? Uh, well, yeah, I think any horror movie should actually be seen in the company of several people. Horror is a cathartic experience and must be shared. If it's a good horror movie, you've got to see it with people. I mean, sitting alone by yourself is fine, and you can get a good scare out of it. But when you're in the audience in a darkened theater with everybody, and they jump at something but you don't, and you jump at something but they don't, Mm -hmm. it almost provides a litmus test as to the people around you and who they are and what they think. And it really does make it a more enjoyable experience, at least for me. Do you guys have any hopes for the sequel? I mean, what are you 
what, what do you guys hope for? You guys have any casting choices or? or I've anything? already been hearing some rumor mill of some of the ideas for the casting, and I have not. I've not been on the prowl for that yet. <laughs> I've I've been hearing a couple names pop up. I'm I'm not right now. I'm not even going to speculate because nothing's been locked in yet, and I take. I take Hollywood rumor mill with a grain of salt. And well, All right. Know. Well, he won't speculate, but I will. Jessica okay. Chastain, get her to play Bev, please. I why? Because like, she's amazing. <laughs> she's an amazing actress, and I think she would rock Bev. I really but, do. But looking at her as a grown-up version of the child, would you... Would you buy that? She's got like, red hair, man. It doesn't matter. She's got red hair. You've got to you've got to have that, more than that. that you she, either have to have you either have to have a cinematic genius of an actor for them not to worry about that, or which is what I've heard they're doing. They're trying to find really good actors mm-hmm. who also kind of resemble the younger counterparts, so it does look like they're grown up versions. Because let's be completely honest. In the miniseries, Harry Anderson looked nothing like Seth Green. That's true. <laughs> That's very, very true. And I think we'll leave it at that. Guy, Tracy, thank you guys so much for uh, the review, and thank you guys for coming in, man. We'll be back at you next Saturday for another edition of The Screen Team. And remember, we want you to know before you go.